The Goat Isles is back after a crazy NFL Sunday in Week 8. We just had a crazy finish in D.C. I'm here breaking down my most impressive teams and disappointing teams of Week 8. So far, our next video, we'll be talking about every single team's performance in Week 8. That is Monday night. So don't worry, in that video, we'll talk about every team. We're highlighting the notables in this one. Let's take a look at what I got. Before we count down the most impressive teams of Week 8, I did want to touch on the Hail Mary game. Bears versus Commanders was such an interesting game. I want to touch on it because neither team made the top three in this video. But, yeah, I mean, what an ending. The Hail Mary was insane. But the main reason I want to talk about it is that the ending, the Hail Mary was so fitting for that game for multiple reasons. Number one being it was a weird game. I mean, the way it started, it's like, all right, the Commanders are dominating, but they're not... It feels like they are, but they're, they're getting field goals instead of touchdowns. They had a couple of potential touchdown you know, scoring plays taken away, but just a bizarre game. We had something I'd never seen with the 12 men on the defense with the offsides, but there was a false start at the same time, and then the rules expert comes in. He's jumbling up his words, and he's like, that sounded confusing. It was very confusing there, which uh, was questionable how they handled that, but... Uh, and then it felt like, yeah, the command, how the commanders done out by more. And then all of a sudden the Bears, like the Bears got this and they hand it to their offensive lineman. He fumbles and it's like the Bears had it, but now they blew it. But now they're in front. And then the Hail Mary happened. So I thought it was pretty fitting with the style of game, though, how weird that game was. And it was kind of fitting because if you did watch that game, it felt like the commanders were, were outplaying the Bears for a heavy portion of that game. So if a team was ever going to get lucky on a win, like a play at the end, yeah, I guess a team that maybe deserved it a little bit more than the other, but the Bears kind of did, you know, they were in the driver's seat, and if they didn't fumble from, it would have been a whole different game. Uh, the Commanders wouldn't have got the ball back there, but it was an interesting game. There was some questionable calls, I thought, in the game as well. Ertz had a touchdown, which I thought was a touchdown. He caught it with two feet and then still had it, went to the ground, laying there, still had it, then it got knocked out. So I was surprised that one that one stood. McConkie scored a touchdown in a different game that was closer of a call, and they stayed with that as a touchdown, as they should. So... Um, yeah, there was some interesting ones. And then the pass interference on the Bears, I, I wouldn't disagree with there being a call. I disagree with being pass interference because the ball was uncatchable. It probably should have been holding if there was going to be a call. Probably wouldn't have made that much of a difference. So, And then the crazy Hail Mary, Jane Daniels buying time. Uh, yeah, he had a really solid game for the most part. You, you know, perfect world, score touchdowns, not field goals. But him versus Caleb Williams was the big talking point. I thought Caleb started to pick it up at the end a little bit, but... Didn't have the best day. I thought, you know, Daniels and Williams both were pressured a bit, and one found ways to beat the pressure, found ways around it by himself time, and the other one, for the most part, really did not. But again, Williams did start to pick it up at the end. But a wild game and a wild ending. Bizarre, actually. The number three most impressive team of Week 8. I should say teams, though, because I did do two. I did a tie. So at number three, we have the Arizona Cardinals clutching up, coming back, and beating the Miami Dolphins, and the Cleveland Browns upsetting a huge upset, maybe the one of the season so far, upsetting the Baltimore Ravens with their new quarterback, Jameis Winston. Uh, yeah, starting with the Cardinals, it was hard to leave either of these teams off the list, so I put them at three, but the Cardinals, I mean, we talked about it. They're so inconsistent this year. One week, they look pretty good. One week, not so much. And they finally put something semi-consistent together because they won Two in a row. They beat the Chargers last week, which was considered an upset. And then they ups considered an upset. They beat the Dolphins this week. And the whole game, it felt like it was going the Dolphins' way. But the Cardinals were just kind of sticking in. At times, it's like, could the Dolphins pull away and make this an ass beating? But no, and they stuck with it. And they honestly, the Cardinals didn't run the ball nearly as good as I thought they would. Because you can run on the Dolphins, and they're usually a pretty good rushing team. They didn't really do that. And, they, and Kyler Murray found different ways to win which usually is a pretty good pass defense, and he was clutch. He's finding different targets. I mean, McBride had a big-time game. Uh, so this was a weird game. I almost go, how did the Dolphins not win this game? But the Cardinals kind of stuck with it and just kept playing better and better and better, Kyler Murray, especially as the game went on. So uh, the big, big picture here, well, Kyler Murray's playing great this year. And even though they couldn't run the ball, that was surprising. And they ran a little bit, but... Semi-productive, semi-productive, that would be generous, but finding ways to win besides that, you know, that's huge, uh, and just putting something consistent together, uh, and they'll play an angry Bears team next week after what happened there, and the Browns, I mean, the, not having the Browns on this list would have been criminal, you have to put them on here, there's just two teams that were a little more impressive than these, but beating the Ravens, I mean, some life with Jameis Winston in there, I love getting Cedric Tillman going, I was a fan of him at Tennessee, he was kind of just a dude there, he was a dog when he was healthy, uh, and he kind of showed that in a game like this, just... Really clutch. Yeah, there was some luck in there, some dropped interceptions, a bad one early in the end zone for the Ravens, and a 
one at the end by Kyle Hamilton, but they clutch up. They're find, finding ways to get the get guys the ball. Jameis Winston getting guys the ball, get guys getting open downfield. And hey, the defense can they give up some big plays, give up some yards, but they're pretty decent in the red zone and they can keep their their team in, in the game. So I mean that interesting one because the Browns are probably in sell mode. They're talking about trading Zedarius Smith and maybe some other pieces. Possibly a Greg Newsom's popped up. Um, does this remove them from a fire sale or any type of sale? And is that a bad thing or a good thing? But overall, this gives them some life and it goes, hey, could we do something like we did at the end of last year? We have a little bit more time to do it now. Uh, you know, it would have to be a very, very impressive turnaround, but gives them some life. So these two teams deserving of being on this video and they are at number three. Number two has got to be the Philadelphia Eagles is a statement win. It feels like they should be ranked one, but there's another team maybe just slightly ahead of them, but the Eagles just dominating the Bengals. Uh, winning big, a little bit of a slow start in the beginning. It's like, all right, you know, that 10 plus minute drive for the Bengals. It's like, all right, the Eagles defense back, the bad one, is it back? And you kind of wonder, but no, they figured it out. The defense has been great over a stretch of several weeks and uh, they continue as this game went, went on and offensively Saquon ran very well. Again, I was surprised he didn't get in the end zone, uh, but uh, yeah, using that tush push uh, very much you know, in this game, but yeah, it, just having those receivers back. I know they've been back for a little bit, but uh, AJ Brown, Devontae Smith going off, and but this was a big, big, this is a a big momentum. I, I would say shifter for for Jalen Hurts, who's kind of struggled a little bit this year, but really got going. Um, you know, th this was a big time game for him uh, again to really get back on track. More of a Jalen Hurts type game. So I thought that was big. R running and, and throwing, you know, downfield everywhere. Doing everything that we know Jalen Hurts can do. Haven't really seen that. And this was probably his best game of the year so far, even though he's had some good moments and they've been winning some games. So, uh, yeah, this was a big statement win for them. You know, exposing that Bengals defense and it hasn't really been exposed in recent weeks. So you thought maybe they were getting better on defense and then getting – but the Eagles kind of, again, exposing that and getting going. The offense getting going. Hurts getting going. Just getting back on track. Uh, I think a big momentum builder, like I said, uh, helping Hurts get his mojo back. I think he, get his mojo, he got his mojo back in this game. So I think that's like kind of the big thing here. And defensively, just continuing to impress Cooper DeGene since he's been playing a lot. Been really good for them. But just uh, been a very impressive defense just because no one's really expecting a whole lot from them recently. So that was a big one. Big statement win for them. Uh, just outplaying and do dominating for the most part, not right in the beginning, but the Bengals. So they come in at number two, very close to being number one. And we do have the shout out to the Detroit Lions scoring 52 points. Did we learn anything new about them? You know, I got the special teams went off, but do have to shout them out as well, 52 points. But number one is got to be the Buffalo Bills with a, a, a statement win, even though you expect them to beat the Seattle Seahawks, but they absolutely obliterate. They dominate a, a pretty solid team in the Seahawks going, you know, last week we're going, Hey, Seattle got a little healthier. They dominated the Falcons. Are they actually a pretty damn good team? Explosive, both sides of the ball, if they're pretty healthy. And the Bills just stomp them. I mean, the big negative, like the, I say it, the only negative with the Bills, because this team is a really good team, the only thing is run defense. And the run defense held up against a pretty good rushing offense today, so I thought that was fantastic. Getting a lead early definitely helps them kind of by default take away the run. Did a good job there. They dominated Geno, just... just I mean, what did the Seahawks do in this game? They didn't. They didn't do anything. That's kind of what I I'm left saying with a game like this. Uh, but Josh Allen threw the ball very well. They got multiple guys active. Uh, Keon Coleman had a great game. I love what I saw from him. And he, he, not nothing from Mari Cooper, but you just think his presence, him being on the roster, does that elevate other targets? Does it, you know, open things up for them possibly? So James Cook getting back on track here as well. This was just a dominant game. Just a far better team in Seattle. Tough place to play. Just a far better team. And again, this team has one flaw. They have one flaw. I mean, if you count, you know, maybe some durability concerns is, is one, I'm sure. But they have one flaw on the football field so far. It's been run defense. They got better in that category today when a lot doubted them. And they just dominated this. You know, the, the Seahawks team that, well, again, last week we're going, is this team sneaky? Is it, they're pretty damn good, actually. So, huge statement win for the Buffalo Bills. The most disappointing teams of week eight so far. Number three, I had a tie again. Number So at number three, we're going to go with two teams. They're going to go with the Bengals. Getting dominated, not in the beginning, but end up getting dominated by the Eagles and the Seahawks who got obliterated by, by the Buffalo Bills. And the Bengals, yeah, they started very well. I mean, a, maybe the drive of the season for anyone. That's textbook, 10 plus minutes in scoring. And it, that was the big thing with this game, Eagles versus Bengals. It's like, are the, the defenses are starting to pick it up? Are they who's for real, who's not? 
Eagles for real, Bengals not. That's what we learned in this game. The Bengals defense still has big problems. It's a good team explosive offense that has problems that are going to hold them back for winning championship type football. And that showed again in this game. You worry about the run defense, you worry about the pass defense. The offense, kind of worry about you know them staying a little more consistent. I'm not really too worried about the offense, but just look like the last superior team, obviously, in a game like that. And that shouldn't really happen, especially with the way... The game started. It's not like they dug themselves a hole or anything. And then Seattle, I mean, yeah, you expect them to lose to the Bills. You expect the Bills to be the better team. But so, I mean, it's, it, it, I don't know if it's the end of the world, but man, my takeaway from this game is like, what did Seattle do in this game? They didn't do anything. They did absolutely nothing. You couldn't even run the ball against a team that struggled to stop the run. I don't think they got a, they were down by a bit uh, pretty early, I guess. So I guess that is a, is part of it, but they couldn't stop Coleman. They couldn't stop. Shakir, they couldn't stop anything. And, you know, nothing, zero things going for Seattle. Zero thing. Like, you could pick out other teams that got embarrassed, and hey, at least they had this one thing going for them. So maybe being at three and not one or two, maybe is a little bit generous. But um, yeah, that's what I that's what I got number three for week eight here for most disappointing teams. Number two is going to be the Ravens, and actually a small part of it. It's it's a part of it, but a small part of it is losing to a one win laughable Cleveland Browns team. While you're red hot, you're losing to that team. And people would say that's kind of the biggest part. It's it's part of it, but and that puts you in the loser column. Like, how does a good a team like the Ravens lose to them? And you will say, you could say, I mean, teams slip up. They played a division rival in Cleveland. There's a lot of splitting going on sometimes within the division, in that division especially. So maybe it's not the end of the world. And I hear you there. So maybe it's not the end of the world. But yeah, a couple, and they were missing some defensive backs, obviously. But a couple things here. I mean, I guess play calling, just not giving Derrick Henry the ball enough. I mean, he's been your guy, your dominant factor. I know Lamar's been dominant too, but and you and know is back and forth, but it's not like you're down big. Run the ball, just not enough there, and that kind of opens up a bigger picture here, and that is when Derrick Henry is not a full force factor, and he played well. He ran well with the, I'd say, limited carries for Derrick Henry. It was 11 or so carries, limited he played well, so but when Derrick Henry isn't like a full game plan or like within the game situational factor and not taking over, and he could have taken over, I gotta, I can't stress that enough. If they have lost those games, Ravens had a slow start early in the year. What were they doing? They were not giving Derrick Henry the ball enough. They were going full go on the passing game, and they cannot win those games. And I know it's gonna bring up people saying. Well, Lamar's played great throwing the ball this year. He's thrown it all over teams. He's been awesome. He's been the MVP. I agree. I agree. But, Derek, the, the run has opened up the pass in a lot of those games. The run has been a full force factor in those games and has dominated those games. And it could have in this game, like I said, can't stress it enough, that Derrick Henry was dominating and they just weren't giving the ball enough. But if it's from start to finish all on the pass... And again, they're productive. So I'm not trying to say Lamar was bad. He did miss some wide open plays that probably would have been touchdowns. But it's just, if they don't play their brand of football, strictly, firmly their brand of football, they lose football games. Am I going to sit here and say it's going to continue? No, but it's not a great outlook. It's not a good look for the outlook, I should say, and beyond this year. And another thing during their small thing, when they were on their winning streak, Look at that winning streak. Did they play a good defense? I'd say the Bills are playing very well. They played great today. They struggled to stop the run, and that's the Ravens' brand of football at home in prime time. They took advantage of that matchup. So, when in the Browns have a pretty good defense. So, when there isn't an obvious matchup advantage for them and they aren't playing a terrible defense, there's still some questions. There's still some questions out there. I'm not worried about their offense at all. They move the ball, they should have put up more points. If there's a couple dropped interceptions, especially the one at the end of Hamilton, you to catch that, they probably win the game, you know. But there are some questions. If the run do- isn't the main factor, if they're not playing their brand of football, if they aren't playing a bad defense, or if there's not, a- if there's a team that just cannot stop the run, can they win those games? Kind of an interesting, some interesting questions looking forward to the playoffs. So that's kind of a big reason the Ravens are up in the top two on this list. So um, most likely. Very, very most likely, very, very much so, they're going to be fine. They're a very good team, and it just was like a division rival. They just dropped one, you know, but there are some things you do kind of question. Number one, it's got to be the most disappointing team in football this year, and that is the New York Jets losing to the New England Patriots, and Drake May's looking pretty good. He gets concussed on a hit, on a 
you know, a hit to the head, and then Jacoby Brissett comes in, and the Patriots still beat the Jets. And the Jets are in the driver's seat multiple times. I thought calls went the Jets' way. Maybe not every one, but there was some questionable pass interference calls on the Patriots throughout this game. I mean, a couple on one drive even. Um, and one that should have been called offensive on Garrett Wilson. And just every right to win this game, they don't win the game. And a lot of the same stuff before Salah was gone. And hey, the defense is playing worse since Salah's been gone. So that obviously wasn't the issue. Issue is they went all in and maybe, you know, what? I think the front office was kind of the issue. But that's that's the big thing here, big big uh, picture. They're a Super Bowl or bust team. How they handled the roster, how they went about it this offseason, even, hey, last week when they traded for Devonta Adams. It's a Super Bowl or bust. Those super, they are Super Bowl or bust moves. It's a Super Bowl or bust roster. And this might be the worst Super Bowl or bust team of all time, the most disappointing one of all time. Not that anyone had, him winning, had, him, had them winning the Super Bowl, but two wins. You serious? So, uh, but another thing is the the splitting between Brees Hall and Braylon Allen is ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. Brees Hall is a far superior back. He was running well. He did not get the ball enough because they gave Braylon Allen the ball a bunch. We saw some uh, quite a bit of that before Salah was fired too. Salah wasn't the reason they were losing. It was pretty obvious. Was he the best coach in the world? Oh hell no. You know, you know, had had his flaws and obviously maybe was losing. The, maybe who knows what was going on in the locker room, but. Um, that wasn't the issue. This is this, uh, the, all the roster management, the moves have backfired on them completely. They lose to the Patriots, a team a few weeks. I mean, when the earlier in the year, the Patriots looked kind of decent. They actually put up fights with teams and the Jets were kind of questionable and they went and just obliterated the score. Didn't really show up fully. They dominated the Patriots in primetime football. And it's like, okay, I know it's the Patriots. They've been playing teams tough. The Jets, this looks about right. They might be getting going here. This might be that team that could be they could be something. And here they go, not too long after. They play without Salah this time. Uh, they, they play the Patriots again, and they lose. And things were going great. Weren't going that great for the Patriots this game. You got to go to a different quarterback. Calls aren't going their way. So it is insanely disappointing. I mean, I, I don't know what else to say about it. So the Super Bowl bus, I mean, still a long season, but it looks like it excuse me, completely backfired on them. So just wild. Just because the roster is pretty sad. I will say that the defense is fall, is kind of not falling apart, but going downhill two weeks in a row as well. And I kind of go back to, I'm remembering, I said it, end of last year, this off season, I'm like, yes, the Jets have a pretty good defense. They got ball players, but I did, I was kind of saying, maybe it was a little, you know, people saying number one defense or top three defense. I'm like, I don't know about that. It might be a little overhyped. My reasoning was, it was because people were basing it off of numbers last year, how many points per game they were giving up. Um, you know, but if you look at last year, what, what were teams doing against the Jets? They were parking the bus. They were hitting the brakes. The game plan was run the ball, run the clock. We're going to get out of here with a win because the Jets cannot do anything on offense. So I think the defense benefited from that. I think they were a little overrated because of that. I still think it's a it, deep down, it can be a very good defense. It showed, we saw it against the Vikings not too long ago. I mean, they're, that's a good defense there, but maybe a little overhyped. Uh, just because of numbers last year, but you got to understand the situation. So very disappointing for the Jets. Again, next video will be our grades and tiers for every team's performance in Week 8. So don't worry, we will talk about your team, every team in Week 8. So we'll have this, the Sunday night games going on right now and the Monday night game. Then we'll have our Week 9 picks video Tuesday night. We have power rankings before that. All kinds of video. Trade deadlines coming up. We got you covered for that as well. Like, subscribe, turn notifications on. Be much appreciated. It's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.